Hi friends, welcome to Spice. In this video, we'll discuss about the differences between EX, that is ATX, versus IEC EX. The topic is as simple as that. It's a, just a continuation of previous videos on hazardous area classification and hazardous area classification standards. So I'll give all these three in the playlist for your reading pleasure. Okay, friends. As usual, I'd like to thank all of you for your continuous support. Keep supporting, keep watching. And again, if you are watching this video for the first time, uh, please subscribe so that you will not miss any other important videos from my site on instrumentation domain. Okay, let's get started. Okay, ATEX. So what is this ATEX? ATEX is derived from the term atmosphere explosives. That is called ATEX. This we all knew, right? So it is a mandatory certification for all products across Europe, right? So ATEX has through uh, two directives. Okay, one is the ATEX 95 directive. Okay, so what is that 95 directive? This is also alternately called as ATEX 2014-34 EC directive. It applies to the manufacturer of all equipment and products that are used in potentially explosive environment. Okay, so that's a point here. Okay, ATEX 95 directive states the basic health and safety requirements that all explosion proof equipment and safety products have to meet in order to be traded in Europe. So this is the ATEX 95 directive. Okay, we have one more also. That is ATEX 137 directive. This is also called as ATEX 99 92 EC directive. Okay. This is aimed at protecting the health and safety of employees who are constantly exposed to potentially explosive working environment. Okay. It also states the basic requirements to protect the safety and health of workers. Okay. It classifies uh, the areas uh, that may contain a potentially explosive atmosphere. Okay. This also states that the area contains a potentially explosive atmosphere have to be accompanied with the warning symbol. So these are all the ATEX 137 directives. Okay, friends. So ATEX 95 is also clear. ATEX 137 also clear. Okay. This is very simple. Right. We'll move on with the IEC EX. What is this IEC EX? It stands for the certification by International Electrotechnical Commission for Explosive Atmosphere. Okay, this is also clear. Okay. IEC EX certifies all allows IEC EX certification allows the products and equipment to be traded across countries without having to be retested and recertified in every country. So this is the biggest advantage. Just think about it. Huh? If it has to be tested in each and every country, think about the cost, you know, that's the advantage here. Okay, IEC EX. Okay, so IEC EX as a common set of sta safety standards amongst the participating country certification. This helps to reduce the testing and certification costs for the manufacturer. This is what we have highlighted earlier, right? Okay. The advantage you also hear, right? IEC EX schemes includes countries in Europe, okay? You know, ATEX is only for Europe, but here it is also covering Europe. Additionally, Canada, Australia, Russia, China, United States, and South Africa. See the, you know, the coverage, the worldwide coverage. That's the advantage here, right? So this is about IEC EX. Okay. Hope you had a very good insight on ATEX and IEC EX. Okay. Now the climax. Right. What's the difference between ATEX and IEC EX? Okay. So if you, I will classify this, you know, uh, uh, differences in three criteria. One is based on the location. That means the countries. And the second is on the certification accountability and third on the certification scheme and the type. 
Okay, so first for the country, okay, as we know, uh, this is attacks is only covered in Europe, okay, but whereas IEC EX uh, globally, right, right, okay, what is the certification accountability, okay, basically this attacks is a law driven, meaning the attacks is responsible for the entire certification, okay, the attacks is responsible for the entire certification, whereas in IEC EX, we have it is a standard driven, meaning external certification party is responsible for the IECEX certification. So that's the difference. Here, ATEX is completely uh, uh, responsible. It's like, you know, a monopoly kind of thing, right? But here, the external certification party is responsible for the IECEX certification. Okay. Then what are all the schemes? As we highlighted earlier, ATEX 95 and ATEX 137. This is for ATEX. But for the IEC EX, we have wide variety. Like one is the equipment scheme, then second is a conformity mock license, and third is a service scheme, and fourth is a certified person scheme. These are all the available certifications. That's all, friends. Thanks a lot for your support. Okay, thank you. Coming up next, mastering instruments flow. In that, we are going to cover all the flow meters, orifice, you know. Uh, vertex flow meter, magnetic flow meter, Coriolis, you know, turbine flow meter, all we are going to cover. So see you uh, very soon. So until then, uh, this is Rambala signing off. Thank you. Bye-bye.